Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the broadcast of the Tam vs. Branson swim meet. Uh, it's a pretty cloudy day out here today, and my name's Cameron. This and is Steven. This is Steven over here. And Cole Stanford, another Tam swim alumni, will be arriving later He'll be to, help, my place. to help uh, commentate this swim meet. The first event will be 200 free. And for the TAM Varsity boys, we have Wyatt, Andrew Sternfels, uh, the other Andrew, <laughs> and Max scoring points for the TAM high side.
before every single meet, the official swim referee gives a talk about all the rules and the different regulations that the all the swimmers are diff are expected to adhere by. And so that is occurring right now. And then after that, we'll get a big T high chant. And uh, my colleague is joining us right here, Cole Stanford. Wow. Say hi to everyone, Cole. Hello, everybody. He just uh, flew in on the red eye. So we're lucky to have him. Very experienced distance swimmer with me just now. And the first event will be 200 medley relay. Right. Girls, girls always go first, ladies first. Yep. So in Team A, in lane four, we will have Addie Everidge, Chloe Firmage, Sophie UT, and Ellie Philp. Strong lineup right there. In lane six, in Team B, we have... Ellen McLean, Nadine Roos, Amanda Mousy, Sabine Berenger. Very strong lineup for the yeah. girls team over there. So from my understanding, Branson does not have that many swimmers. So correct me if I'm wrong, Cole, but if they don't have enough swimmers to fill every point scoring lane in the heats, is it a uh, fourth? Uh, I actually don't know, but I know they don't have enough swimmers to score enough points to win anyways. That I believe on the boys' side, they've only got three swimmers currently. They've got two non-club swimmers, one club swimmer. And the other club swimmer they would have, who's quite fast, is sick, so he's not going to be here. Yeah, that's what I heard. A lot of, a lot of viruses going around. Yep. <laughs> and if you didn't already know, today is Rose Day, so all the seniors at uh, the break in the middle of the meet will be receiving roses as a tradition of uh, the water sports at Tam High. I know it happened in water polo too. I'm afraid of you people. <laughs> How are you? And uh, yeah. All right, we got the 200 girls medley relay coming up. 
Once again in lane four, Team A, we got Addie Everidge, Chloe Firmage, Sophie UT, and Ellie Philp. In lane six, Team B, we got Ella McLean, Nadine Ruse, Amanda Mousey, and Sabine Berenger. Cole, did you have any special pregame rituals when you were swimming for Tamai? Lucky socks, lucky sunscreen, lucky speedo. Not, not really. No, to be honest. Little fun uh, fact is, a lot of these uh, swimmers are superstitious. I know I had my favorite speedo. I know I always put sunscreen in the same same spots. Oh yeah, I did have my favorite speedo. Uh, but especially for me suiting up, I would always listen to Freebird before my race. That that guitar solo oh, yeah. at the end right there. always get me hyped up. And I just have that going on repeat in my head as yeah. I swim for four to five minutes straight in the <laughs> 500. <laughs> yep. So it looks like the girls team more numbers than the guys team on Branson. They're able to field a couple of relays teams. Four and six are the lanes we want to be looking at for Tam High swimmers. Mm -hmm. Four and six. <coughs> Addy Average leading off on the backstroke for Tam in lane four. That's the person to watch. He's going to be going fast, getting ahead of the competition. Shout out the beautiful lady in the pink hat. That's my mother. Great person. Here we go, four and six folks. And we're off. Wow. Notice how much farther Addy Average in lane four goes underwater than her competition. Seems to make a big difference, huh, Cole? Yeah, underwaters, that's the future of swimming. Wow, she's popping up the halfway mark. Fastest way to move in the pool. That requires some good lungs. Oh, yeah. Here we go. We got Chloe Firmage hopping in for Team A. Nadine Reese in lane six hopping in. This is the breaststroke portion. Tam with a substantial lead in first. Safe to say we'll secure first, but the battle to look at is for second here. Yeah. We got Nadine Ruse catching Branson over in lane three. And that's Sophie UT. She just entered in for team A on the uh, the butterfly. And Amanda Mousey enters the water for Tam on the team B. Here comes Ellie Philp, anchor of the Team A, A Relay. She's going to finish off with freestyle. And here comes Sabine Berenger, anchoring for the Team B Relay on freestyle. No way! No way! No way! Branson's last swimmer for their B team relay entering the water now. So Tam will take places one and three. Coming up for the the men's relays, 
Branson d isn't able to uh, to make a whole relay team as they've only got three swimmers. So Tam, head coach Ken Weber, has made all three relays even. So it's going to be an intense race between the A, B, and C team relays for the medley relay. <coughs> On the A team for the medley relay, we got Andrew Sternfels, Finn Crowley, Declan, and Max. Kolesnikov. Team B, we got Carter, Paul, Gino, and Marcus. And Team C, we got Bradley, Ari, Wyatt, and Dean. So all very evenly stacked relays here. So again, look at Andrew Sternfeld and Carter Albies underwater is very strong. Going far underwater. Wow, why it looks like he's cruising here, folks. Uh, entering the water on the guy's side, looks like we have Finn Crowley, Paul Falzone, and Ari Blocker. Ari's a bit behind. Paul's leading the race right now. We've got Gino coming in here strong to finish off his leg and butterfly. Marcus Prosh hopping in. Over in lane four, we've got Declan finishing his for Max to get in now. And Dean, still on the blocks, is a very speedy freestyler, so he will make up some ground here, folks. Let's see if he can reel him in. Dean filled uh, my spot as the 50 freestyler when I left, so I was glad to see he's doing well. You can tell Dean's made up some ground, but it wasn't enough. His relay team's going to be getting third. Dean's a senior and team captain for the Tam boys team. Okay, who do we... Are we reading off people? Yep. And here we go, uh, ladies 200 free. In lane two, we've got Elise Harris. In lane four, we've got Keely Everidge. Or my bad, that was heat two. <laughs> Um, no, 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 we're on heat two. That's good, I think. <laughs> no, we're on heat one. <laughs> no, we're on heat, we're on heat one. <laughs> In heat one, we got lane two, Samantha Octavio. Lane four, Julia Ulstad. Lane six, Amanda Mousy. Apologies for that there, folks. looking like the TAM girls have a strong 200 group. We've got two TAM swimmers leading <coughs> off and a Branson swimmer in third.
All right, coming on here on their last lap, we have uh, in lane six leading, we have Harper Buck. Or no, uh, Amanda Mousy. <laughs> this is so hard to keep track of the heats. No, lane four. <laughs> Lane four with first place. With a time of two minutes and nine seconds is Keeley Everidge. In second place, we have lane three. In second place, we have lane two, which is Elise Harris. Coming up right now, we got Andrew Sternfels on block four. We got Wyatt Donaldson on block six. And way down there on block two, I believe, is Finn Crowley. Got an all Tam heat. No Branson swimmers in the water. So Tam will be sweeping this. Andrew Sternfels looking strong, starting off in the lead. Cole, you swam the 200 free a lot. Do you have any I did. any inside information on what what the strats are? Yeah, it's it's just a really painful race in general. But the most important section of the race, I'd say, is is the third 50. So the in terms of the number of laps, that's the fifth and sixth lap <coughs> of the 200. If you're able to hit it hard there, where everyone else is feeling the burn, you can you can pull it off and stay ahead. Yeah. That's where the race, in my opinion, is oftentimes won or lost. What effort would you say you're giving those first, that first 100? When I swam it, I'd, I'd try not to go too hard so I could continue strong in that third and give everything that I had left in that fourth 50. But the new school of thought is for the 200 is you, want, you really want to be going as fast as you can throughout and progressively your times on each 50 will be slower so your first 50 will be your fastest and your fourth will be your slowest um, mm. so really letting that that sprint ability your fast so kind of sprinting the whole, the whole yeah so so instead of <coughs> it being kind of a mid-distance event the 200 is more and more being swam as a sprint where you just try to hold on to the finish Right, Andrew's cruising yeah. in here to the finish, looking strong. He's going to be... Andrew Sternfels in lane four with the 153.16. So that's a strong, strong time. That's not a time to be, to be disregarded, folks. There we got Wild Donis, Wyatt Donaldson in lane four, or lane six, sorry, with the 202. And in lane... Two over there, we got Finn Crowley, my brother, with a time of 2.06. We had Wyatt Donaldson. Oh, lane four, Andrew. Yeah. Now we've got the 200 IM girls. In lane two, we have Sophie UT. In lane four, we have Chloe Firmage. Lane six is Laney Octavio. And lane eight is Isabella Micchio. <coughs> Sounds like Chloe won't be swimming.
up onto the blocks for the first and only heat of the 200 IM girls. Currently waiting on a swimmer, seeing if she shows up. I guess her name is Addie. It's been a slight, slight mix up, I guess. Their last last minute change. Looks like we've got Addie Average in place of Chloe Firmage uh, in lane four. That's going to be a shocker. Oh. <laughs> oh. That always sucks, being called last minute for an event. Especially something as difficult as the 200 I am. <laughs> Not a lot of time to mentally prepare. That is still a very strong swimmer for the TAM girls. Starts off leading the race. Addie's already taking a commanding lead here in lane four. Next we have a Branson swimmer in lane three. In lane two, we have Sophie UT Tam, and currently in fourth place in lane six, <coughs> we have Lainey Octavio. Shout out Mari Gartner. All right, and in first place we have Addy Average despite the uh, last minute call up to the 200 IM. She finishes first with a big lead with a time of 218. And in comes the rest of them. <coughs> Second place comes Branson, and third and fourth come Tam. Next we got the boys, 200 yards. Individual medley. We've got Dean in lane four. We've got Marcus in lane six. And Bradley in, in lane, lane five. five. Bradley, you know a little bit about Bradley, huh, Cole? Yeah, Bradley's my younger brother. He's he's the, he's rocking no cap out there with Brian Prosh in lane eight. But if I had to bet, I would bet my house on lane four, Dean. <laughs> Safe bet. Dean with a commanding lead right off the start. Marcus in second place. Brian looks like in third. Also forgot to mention in lane seven, we've got Valley. Not a person to forget. Strong swimmer. He's on the come up, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Dean and Marcus. 
Dean's just cruising. running away with it right now. Dean's cruising, minimal effort. Dean and Marcus, both seniors, and in the race for third place, it's it's all we've got an all sophomore crowd: Bradley, Valley, and Brian. Dean pulling even farther away now in lane four. Bradley's making his move here on the breaststroke, getting a lead in the race for third place. Just looked over at his competition, Val, right next to him. Dean will take first place of the 200 men's medley, re er, medley, individual medley. In second place, we got Marcus Prosh in lane six. In lane five, we got Bradley. Shout out, Brad. Bradley doing a strong shoulder-driven finish into the wall. Big Brad. Same thing with Val. Love One that. of the things that Coach Ken drills into his swimmers. Brian there, shoulder driving into the wall, driving in that strong finish. I can't tell you how many times that's been the difference for me between being a place behind and being a place of ahead of where I would normally finish. Indeed. Great way to finish a race. And next, we got my personal favorite event. We got the 50 freestyle. And in heat one for the girls, we got lane two, Sabine Berenger. Lane four, Julia Olvstad. Lane six, Ella McLean. And lane eight, Audrey Lowell got three heats of this event it's a common swimmer favorite because it's short and fast but yeah very popular event Looks like Branson's pulling away with this. Lane three. Lane three takes first place. Looks like there was a misfire of the touch pad in lane eight. Time of 3.1 seconds is not possible. <laughs> as yet yeah, in the 53. Next heat for the girls, we've got lane two, Nadine Ruse, lane four, Lily Damson, lane six, Claire Lawson, and lane eight, Sarah Kemper. We got three Tam swimmers, pretty neck and neck here. Looks like lane six will pull away and win it. Looks like lane oh, four. Oh, lane, lane, lane four. four. Wow. Time of, it's very, very close there. 20 with a, just over a tenth of a second separating first and second place. Lane four and lane two. <coughs> And 
in the last heat. We have got, well, it's all mixed up on the sheet here, folks, so I do not know. <laughs> A little bit of confusion behind the blocks as well. Next up, we got boys 50 free. <clears throat> oh, looks like there's one more heat of the girls 50 free. Heat four of girls now stepping up to the blocks. We've only got two swimmers, it looks like. Okay, there we go. <coughs> we're back up, we're firing. Okay, looks like Branson, Nate Johnson in lane three, winning it. He's suited up for this, so this, this clearly meant a lot to him. It's about a 22-2-3 from Nate. Second place uh, in lane four, we have Paul. We've got a bit of friendly rivalry between Paul and Nate. They both swim for the same club team, North Bay Aquatics. Um, Heat two is now stepping up to the blocks. In lane six, we've got Finn Crowley. Lane seven, I believe, is. Beats me. Um, sorry, folks. <laughs> In first place, in lane four, we have got Ari Blotcher, strong swimmer. In second place, we have Finn Crowley in lane six. And it looks pretty close between seven and eight with, I think there was a misfire on pad seven. Yeah, 19, uh, wait, 19, uh, oh six in pad eight again, so <laughs> it looks like Looks like we might have a faulty lane um, touch pad over there in lane eight. That's all right though. That's that's why lane we have the uh, the manual timers. Yeah. So graciously volunteer their time. And after the boys fifty three, we have the row ceremony. So stay tuned for that.
Looks like the uh, senior girls are lining up right now Rose with their roses right in hand. Don't really know what's going on. Oh, we got Chloe Furmage with her dad. These swimmers, Cole, they put in so much work over the years. Yeah. I remember the rose ceremony being an awesome, awesome thing to commemorate our efforts throughout the years. Yeah, the rose ceremony is great. Super memorable for all involved. The, the lower classmen get to say goodbye to their seniors who they've been with through their whole got entire high school experience. Yeah. And the they got pretty emotional last year, huh? Emotional. It did. It, did. it got very emotional. We, we had some very emotional speeches, some tears. We've got Candace giving a speech now. For, um, <coughs> looks like... Going to LMU, folks. And she just got into Cal, apparently. That was <laughs> Next up, we got Nadine Ruse. majoring in biomedical engineering, and she is still undecided where she wants to go. And Nikki Wallen. Wow. Studying marine biology at, it sounds like she's deciding between a different, a lot of different colleges, one of them yeah. being uh, University of Washington. Another university in Hawaii, university in England. Lots of options. Next up, we got Ken with the boys' rose ceremony. Looks like we got five seniors. These seniors are, are very special for us. They were, when we were swimming, they were always the, the year below us. So we've been with them through most of their high school experience. It'll be cool to see where they're all going. There's Marcus Prosh. Ken is explaining how his mom is Susan Prosh. Susan Prosh, Susan yes, Prosh. Te teaches calculus here at um, <coughs> at Tam. We've both had her. Lovely lady. Yeah, great, great class. One of my favorite classes that I took here at Tam. And there's his younger brother too, who also swims on Tam. <laughs> Didn't quite hear what he's majoring in or what college he was going to. Got Carter up. Here's Carter Albi. Business so administration sounds great like great choice. Great choice. Little bias. Of course.
Carter, uh, one of the several club swimmers that we've actually got on TAM right now, swims for North Bay Aquatics, <laughs> as well as TAM, so one of our stronger swimmers. Here's Callum McLean. Callum is going to be going to Cal Poly to study business administration. Not 100% set, but that is his top yeah. choice, which is both me and Cole's major at that college. So uh, hopefully we'll be seeing him yeah. there next year. Getting his mom and sister in the photo. Sounds like he's deciding between Cal Poly and SDSU, but heavily leaning towards Cal Poly. Yep. Good choice. Next, Next up, we got Gino. Gino McDonald. Gino. Lovely guy. Great guy. He's been swimming with Ken at the Seals for, for many years, long before Tam swim. So it's... Recently it's saw on a Tam uh, Instagram post that Gino won a scholarship so congrats to Gino for that it's a big big event Gino is a frequent demonstrator for Ken and his his many drills to uh, improve freestyle technique. So good to see Gino up there. That is true. All right, now we've got Dean, who's personally requested me to hype hype him up. <laughs> Here's we call his nickname is Dean the Bean. Um, Why is that? He just is. But uh, Dean is a very strong swimmer. He's also a team captain this year. Uh, Swims uh, for North Bay Aquatics as well. Great guy. I think he's deciding between Dartmouth and uh, I think he recently just got into Cal, which so are two very notable small community colleges. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, so some big news for Dean today and a uh, lot to decide where he's going to be spending his next four years. But it'll make the right choice for him. I think he's majoring in ec or, uh, mechanical, mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering. Yeah. Dean's been stressing over college for a long time. Long so time. It, it's good to see him getting into somewhere that he's he's <laughs> he's happy. It's it's. I'm glad to see him happy. It's there was a long time where yep. he was afraid he wouldn't even get into any college. See, junior junior year started junior year. Me and Cole both had a class with Dean, and we would never hear the end about how he's. Just not getting into college and yeah. lo and behold he's deciding between Cal and Dartmouth yeah always wondering what sort of activities <coughs> he should do to make himself look more attractive to college but for you younger folks out there I'd say starting summer sophomore year summer junior year great great time to start getting some activities to look good for college there you go you got the inside scoop from yeah. Cole Stanford there we go we've got all the seniors up there with coach Ken for a photo that's more of a reason to tune into TAM TV for yeah. future swim meets you get some valuable college information. Now we got the five uh, seniors up there with Coach Ken. Now we're getting our senior girls up there. <coughs> Looks like there's another straggler oh. sprinting across the pool deck <laughs> to make it to the photo op.
Looks like we've been lucky enough to get uh, a glimpse with Dean, yep. one of the let's Tampa get Let's get Dean over here. We have an interview with him. <coughs> give you my headset. Dean, you've had a lot of strong swims today. Yeah. How have you felt about them? I felt pretty solid. I felt like my 2 a.m. Um, time wasn't really there, but I felt that I was feeling smooth in the water, putting like good amount of effort, and I felt like I was moving pretty quick, so it felt pretty solid. That's awesome. Thank you, yeah. Would you say uh, the weather has impacted your performance at all? It's pretty cloudy. I'd say, yeah, it's it's pretty chilly. Usually, I swim faster when it's a lot warmer, and it's a little cold, so my muscles are kind of yep. feeling weird in the water. But, agree. but yeah, definitely. So we got your next event coming right up. Yeah, You're 100, in the fly. 100 fly. What can you tell us about little t trips and... Uh, Oh wow! <laughs> Little uh, tips and tricks that you that you do. Well, for hunter fly, I usually don't like going all out on the first fifty. I usually like to go pretty chill on the first fifty and then hammer it home on the second one. So like, kind of build it up throughout the way. That's great. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Dean on Cal. Thank uh, you so much. Appreciate it. That was Dean Gustavo, and we'll let him get That's to me. his next event. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> next up, we got girls hundred fly. Okay, so it looks like we've got the hunter fly coming up. This is a uh, this is a very difficult event for swimmers. Swimming four lengths of butterfly, it's quite a quite a taxing stroke. Um, Fun fact: I was so bad at fly that Ken banned me from swimming it in practice because he thought I would hurt myself. So, uh, yeah. Uh, that's true. <laughs> Ken, Ken's always looking out for his swimmers and, and fly in particular. If you're swimming <coughs> it improperly, you're using too much arms and not enough uh, emphasis on your kick and core you can actually hurt your shoulders so something to to watch out for when you're swimming but if you if swim properly fly can be a beautiful stroke to watch who do we have swimming the 100 fly for the girls first so 100 fly for girls we got one heat in lane two we got Isabella Mikio. Lane four, Addy Everidge. In lane six, Amanda Mousy. So that should be coming up fairly soon here. We are still in the break of the swim meet, so bear with us. Yep. Yeah, all the timers are getting back together, getting back organized. And flashback to a couple of meets ago, Tam lost their first swim meet since what, 20, started since 2022? Since, since before our time. This this was before we even went to TAM. Yep, TAM was undefeated. All, all undefeated all throughout our collective, me and Cam's <coughs> freshman, uh, freshman yeah. sophomore, junior, and senior years. But that win streak has come to the end at the hands of a very strong and formidable Tara Linda. Yep. Lots of strong freshmen. One even beat uh, Dean Gustafson in the 1500, I believe. Yeah. Very strong swimmer. Got some strong distance swimmers. Just a a very a very young and talented team. So they're going to be a force for next for the next few yeah. years. Is it a coincidence that uh, when me and Cole graduate, we lose our first uh, meet? I don't. Think I don't so. know. I don't. I don't think so either. We we had a very strong, very strong <laughs> senior class. No, but in all realness, that Terrellanda team is a force to be reckoned with. They are. On top of their stuff, to say the least. Um, we'll be seeing uh, a lot from them in the next couple of years. <laughs> Some very fast freshmen. Tam, unfortunately, has not had uh, a very large class of freshmen. We only have one freshman, I believe, yep. with us. Uh, on the guys' side, not, not the girls'. Yeah, obviously a big part of high school athletics is the incoming classes that play the sport freshman year. Because at the end of the day, that's that's who are going to be your heavy hitters when they uh, get trained up and they get nurtured and they get mentored and taught all these great things. And you know, by their senior year, they they have the team on their shoulders. And so it's always super important to have a good incoming class for any any Tam high sport or any high school sport in general. And uh, yeah, we had a we had a pretty good uh, freshman class coming in when we, we were when we were on the team, and uh, 
So that that's a vital thing for for high school teams is a good incoming class because that's that's who's going to be carrying the team down the road, obviously. Mm -hmm. Looks like Coach Ken Weber just fixed up uh, the touch pad in lane eight, which we were pointing out earlier was having a couple problems with firing early. Uh, so hopefully the meet should be resuming soon. But yes, as you as you're saying, that the freshmen very important and being trained up and and given proper technique by Coach Ken, very a very intelligent uh, and good coach. <coughs> knows how you to know get the his most background? out of Do you know if he swam in college? He he did. I don't I don't remember where. <laughs> Ken, yeah, very knowledgeable person. Yep. Very knowledgeable individual, not just in swimming. Yeah, I believe he has a PhD in some field of botany and a PhD in law, so a very intelligent man. Yep. All right, looks like we've got the girls, 100 fly, getting behind the blocks now. Only Once again, sorry, swimmers. in lane two, we got Isabella Mikio. Lane four, we got Addie Everidge. And in lane six, we got uh, Amanda Mousy. So it looks like Addie Everidge, as a consequence of swimming the 2 IM earlier in the day, will not be swimming the 100 fly. <coughs> looks like Branson is taking the lead here in the 100 fly. Tam not far behind in second and third. So that's the end of the women's 100 fly. Branson winning and Tam getting second and third. But up next we have the uh, boys 100 fly. All, all, another all Tam lineup. In lane two we have Max Kolesnikov. In lane four we have Dean Gustafson. Lane six, Gina McDonald. And lane seven, Wyatt Donaldson. Lights out and away we go. Dean in the obnoxious pink neon speedo in the middle lane. Going fast as usual. Slowly pulling ahead. One thing Dean could work on is, uh, is his underwater. <coughs> He's going about the same distance as everybody underwater, which is about to that yellow coach's mark. He's popping up even before that now. Of course, 100 fly is very difficult, very taxing on the lungs, keeping your breath for that, those long underwaters, but still going strong, leading. We've got Gino in second, Wyatt coming in third, Max coming in fourth. And a Branson swimmer, it looks like, uh, holding up the tail. Dean coming in strong with a 57-17. And we've got Gino with a 59.37, Wyatt with a 102.74, and Max with a 103.46. Next up, we have the girls 500 free, I believe. Is that right? Yes. Next up, we have. Um, Yep, girls 100 free. 100 free, yes. 100 yes, free. girls 100 free. In heat one, in lane. <coughs> <coughs> in lane.
in lane two, we got Audrey Lowell. Lane four, we got Sophia UT. Lane six, Sabine Beringer. And lane eight, Claire Lawson. Hundred free is another one of those um, events where it's really just a battle. Not as much as the other events, but your age are sprinting the whole time. Your start off the block matters. Your reaction time matters. Every flip turn matters. Everything you do matters. Everything you do can add a, a tenth, minus a tenth off your total time. So everything here needs to be perfect for people to be setting personal records, etc. Looks I've like got a good we got race. lane four in the front and lane six catching. <coughs> Apologies for that if you heard that, folks. <laughs> wow, looks like we got lane six closing on lane four. Not quite a race on our hands. Let's see if. Lane four can hold off the lead. Oh, it looks like lane six is coming in strong. Wow. Lane six also knows Sabine. Sabine is closing in on Sophia. And one. Close race. Uh, it looks oh, like, we, looks like Sabine six. won. Wow. So Sabine with the comeback. Yeah, just by 16 hundredths of a second. So swimming, you know, really comes down to the details. Everything, as Cam said earlier, can add, subtract 10th hundredth. So the details, really important. <coughs> that, that's what made the difference in that race right there. And if you didn't know, I'll say this later. Heat two, we got lane two, Frankie Porzio. Lane four, we got Elise Harris. Shout out Elise Harris. Wonderful dad working the camera today. Uh, lane six, we got Peyton Eberhart. Arbed. Lane eight, we got Ava McGar. little inside swimmer knowledge. Most of the time when the heats are created, the, the swimmers with the faster times on paper will be more towards the middle of the starting blocks. So that will be like lane four and six. Yeah, so yeah, or, or for uh, lane four and five oftentimes <laughs> are the fastest lanes. So we'll have the uh, fastest swimmers swimming down the middle, which is also, I believe, slightly faster than the outside lens so you you do have a bit of an advantage coming in if you have a faster seed time yep. normally in high school dual mates um you'll have the home team and the even lanes and the away team and the odd lanes but since branson does not have a very large swim team we have tam swimmers holding up in a lot of the odd lanes Right after this, we got the boys 100 free. Boys 100 free, looking like a, it's going to be a good race here. We've got Marcus Prosh in lane two. In lane three for Branson, we have Nate Johnson, a strong club swimmer for North Bay Aquatics. So he swims with many of our, with, t with many of Tam's club swimmers um, at their club practice. In lane four, we have Andrew Sternfelds. In lane five, Declan Murphy. And that looks like it's all for the 100 free, so <coughs> not that many swimmers, but it should be a very good race to watch. Nate Johnson is suited up for this race as well. Let's see how fast he can go. Lanes to watch here, the middle lanes, folks, four and three. Yep. Got a race between Andrew and Nate, it looks like. We've got Tam Swimmers not far behind in the other lanes. It looks like it should be a very good race to watch. Looks like Nate's in first, Andrew in second, Declan trailing close behind Andrew in third. And Marcus and Ford. Coming in very close off the wall there. Uh, time difference of just 17 hundredths of a second. But Nate Johnson is now pulling away in that third. 25 ahead of Andrew. 
you know, the, the tech suit in swimming is, is very important if you want to achieve your best time. Yeah, what do you think made uh, Nate suit up today? You know, I, I heard he had really hoped to race Dean in the 50 and 100. Um, so it's a personal grudge. A bit of a personal grudge, say. but also seeing how fast you can go. And in the, in the big meets like the MCAL championships, NCS and state that some of these swimmers will be swimming at, they'll yeah. be suiting up to go as fast as they possibly can. The, the, suit, the suit actually can, can lead to significant improvements in your time, improves your buoyancy. <coughs> Reduces resistance. Next up, we have got the girls 500 free, the most dreaded event in swimming, and Cole's favorite event. So, yeah, I'd, I'll I'd say it's the most dreaded event <coughs> in the in the high school dual meets. But for true dread, you'd want to swim the mile. So lane two, we have Nola Powstrand. Lane four, Ella Philp. Lane six, Samantha Octavio. And lane eight, Juliet Goldmacher. Looks like Julia is not here swimming the 500 today. We Good also have choice. a Branson swimmer in lane three. Now this is all about pacing, folks. This is all about using the blood in your, or the oxygen in your blood wisely and using your energy very wisely. Yeah. Cole, what would you say your, your structure was, your strategy was for the, for the 500? My strategy, I try to hold the same time consistently throughout the whole entire race. Naturally, my, my first 50 would be a bit faster because you'd get a couple extra seconds off your time from the dive. But from there, I'd, I'd try to hold it very consistently, just feeling my effort and going at a consistent pace. Uh, the lane, we don't, we don't have the... Um, the lap counters in the frame right now, but they, they play an important part in the race as well. When I swam, I'd always have my lap counter try to hold pace for me. So based off of my splits, if I was if I was going too slow, I'd have my lap counter shake it to, um, shake the lap counter underwater to speed me up. See if we can get the lap counters in the frame here. Uh, very, very important part of the race. Very, very good to have uh, someone you know and have some good communication with your lap counter because they can give you all sorts of information during your race. Most importantly, of course, being the lap number you're on is it's very hard to count to 20 while swimming, putting that level of effort in. I know, Cole, you said earlier that um, the 200 free at least in college is becoming more of an all-out sprint would you say the 500 is also kind of taking that route you know one of my coaches once told me that that distance has now become a controlled sprint so you're trying to go of course as nature is nature of the racing but trying to go as fast as you can and hold that but i'd say not not to that same degree of, of the 200 the 500 is too long to to really sprint it so I'd say the 500 is still in the same category as of most distance events where you try to get uh, a good pace going and then just hold on to that pace throughout your entire race. Um, I mean, of course, it's important. You don't want to go out too fast. Going out too fast, that will bring you a lot of pain later on in the race. Um, but going going too slow as well. You don't want to go out too slow. If you're if you're coming in with a lot of energy, a lot of gas left in the tank, you know that you could have gone faster earlier and could have ultimately had a better time. So I think the most important thing is having everything be consistent, even your last lap. Of course, you'll be you'll be putting everything out, everything that you have into that last lap. But if you can make that last lap hurt by going hard all throughout the 500 and have that be as close in time as you can to your other laps just by nature of, of the amount of effort that you've been putting in, that's, that's what you want to have.
A very interesting part of distance swimming that isn't talked about a whole lot is is the crossover between this and practice. In practice, you're oftentimes sharing lane with people in circle swimming, but in distance swimming, it's really important to focus on not doing that. My coach, uh, when I s from when I swim North Bay, Don uh, sent me this spreadsheet with based off of how much you circle swim how many additional yards you'll be swimming and I think it's really interesting if you're swimming just three inches from the line you'll add 0 0.304 yards um, but if you're swimming two feet from the line you can add up to 17 and a half yards which is just insane so you really want to focus on going straight over that black line not not going back and forth Got a got a strong strong lineup from Tam here. We've we've got the bell. That's always it's always a relief to hear as a as a distance <laughs> swimmer, knowing your lap counters haven't messed up and you're almost done with it. But oftentimes that's where it really gets painful as you're putting every last bit that you have into the race, trying to make it to the wall before your competitors. And it looks like we've actually got quite a good race here uh, going on between lane two and lane four who is that Between frankie porzio and elise harris so it looks like elise harris is is pulling away ahead of frankie is going to be coming in to win this race hard fought race six minutes yeah. of all you got oh never mind oh, never mind <laughs> oops sorry about that <laughs> So lane four, uh, looks like the touch pads, they, they unfortunately did not finish hard enough to activate the touch pads. So their times aren't being displayed on the screen. Luckily we've got our volunteer timers here to make sure they actually get their times. So they, they do have times, just unfortunately those they're not available pads, to us as they're not displayed. Those touch pads are notoriously finicky, huh, cool. Any, any I mean, I'd, I'd say yeah, every every th those those touch pads see a lot of use in C's and and I think you really want to focus on hitting those as hard as you can when you finish because if, if you're too light those they can not go off and touch pads are the most accurate way of getting your time because right when you touch <coughs> that's um, <laughs> that's right when your time is recorded <laughs> whereas you can have a bit of error with the the volunteer timers. Fun fact is, um, in college club swimming, they actually don't use volunteer timers. There's only touch pads. So if you're planning on continuing swimming just for fun, doing club, you really want to be sure that you're hitting those walls hard on your finish to activate the touch pads. Because if you don't, you might have to swim that race again to get your time. Another fun fact. Um you can uh, get a personal record pretty easily. You just got to slip them some, some dough, huh, Cole? <laughs> I've never had experience with that. Um, <laughs> but they s what do they say, no. money talks? M money talks, uh, uh, but of course. Money talks and here, money here shaves Marin, time. I feel like uh, it'd, it'd be a lot of money to, <laughs> for it to talk, so... So we've got our last swimmer from Branson here in the water. I believe this is their last lap here. Yep, touching the ball. It's a good race by the ladies there. Now we have the guys. The guys 500. Looks like it just might be Max Kolesnikov. I've never swam the 500 by myself, but a lot of respect to Max for, for stepping up and swimming it. Oh, nope, never mind. We've got Ari, it looks like. Ari's still putting on his calf. Um, Ari's, Ari's someone to, to watch in this race. Same as Max. Ari's been, been training with North Bay as well, like many of the other guys here. Been getting fast. Ari puts up pretty good times, huh? He does. I, I was swimming with him yesterday in practice, and... 
he's improved a lot from last year, so I'm excited to see what he what he's capable of here. The dreaded stand and step off the blocks, so, something none of these swimmers want to hear, especially in a on a cold and windy day like today. Ari still needs to tie his suit. Oh Ari, my gosh. Ari, Ari, Ari. Ari is notoriously a little bit scatterbrained, so <laughs> it's um, seeing Ari up here. It's good, but scatterbrained. Yeah. Of course, an intelligent. I'm sorry, good Mr. Person. and Mrs. Blocker, oh. if you had to hear that. <laughs> there. Oh. Appears there's some problem. Big oh. technical difficulties. Never mind. No nope. technical difficulties. There's a technical so difficulty with a technical difficulty. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, we've got Wyatt and uh, Brian generously <laughs> donating their time to to lap count for these two people. Brian uh, being a little bit of a jokester with a lap counter. Yeah. Unfortunately, we we are still having some technical difficulties with the, with the display. We can't see how fast they're going. <coughs> Ari's going ahead a bit now, looking strong. In the 500, the time system was malfunctioning again, so we can't even give you guys the, the times of what they just went. But we're back just in time for the middle of the 200 free relay girls. And lane four, Team A, Julia Olvstad, Audrey Lowell, Sophia UT, Chloe Firmage. And in lane six, Team B, we have Lily Domson, Amelia Octavio, Francesca Angelo, and Isabella Micchio. Tam getting the first, Branson second, and we've got Tam coming in third here now. <coughs> that one, that was exciting. Chloe overtook her on that final one. Oh. Uh, we've got the boys 200 yard freestyle up. Uh, we've got Gino and Marcus in lane four and six leading off for Tam. Again, Branson does not have enough guys swimmers to field the whole relay, so there will be no relay. <coughs> Again, the co coach Ken has made these, has tried to make these relays as even as possible for the guys to race and have some competition. So this should be a very good race here in store for us. We've got Gino coming in a bit ahead, I believe, of Marcus. Very good freestyle on display here. Neck and neck. Just half a second in between them. Got Carter. Beautiful freestyle. Just a bit ahead of Callum, maintaining the lead. Who do you got on the blocks, cool is that? We've got Val? Max Kolesnikov and uh, Val Herrera, I believe. Herrera. Herrera. Val is picking up the pace. Trying to reel in Max here. He's got a ton of afterburners here. Max still holding on to the lead. We've got Ari and Andrew oh, up this next. This is a competitive, uh, a duel between the the two two very strong juniors for Tam right here. Wow. 
Wow. Oh, Ari, wow. Ari, Ari, Ari is trying. <laughs> Ari is cruising it. That's wow. disappointing. Ari has just swam the 500, so. He's treating that as his cool down. I was treating it as cool down. <laughs> I, I think he could do better, but. So, lane six yeah. with the big comeback. <laughs> Andrew clearing away. Andrew's got a very beautiful stroke. Very, very talented swimmer. <coughs> Ari, I believe, could have gone faster still. I, th I think he, he still had he had a bit of juice left in him. That's what I do back in the day. 500 followed by Andrew the, with the, the celebration. Yeah. Might be right to celebrate. He's got the 100 back for the ladies now. 100 back for the ladies in Heat 1. We got Lane 2, Ella McLean. Lane 4, Addison Everidge. In Lane 6, Ella Philp. Watch the underwaters here. The underwater is super important part of backstroke. Wow. Miss Everidge with the lead off the bat. Branson Swimmer in, in lane five also had very good underwaters coming up in the second. That second lap, though. Wow, big battle here between Addie uh, even six and eight. Under the, yep, six and eight battling it out. Addie's holding onto that distance underwater. She went around halfway on that second lap, third lap. She's coming up just past the coach's mark. Looks like Addison Average will take this one home for Tam. Yep. With Branson Swimmer coming in close second. Addison's also uh, an a North Bay swimmer. And look like, here, like lane six here and eight. And Branson. Very close. Swims club in addition to high school, so. Lane six, Ella Philp. Gets beat by lane eight, Sarah. Next up, we've got the boys, 100 backstroke. In this event, we have Carter, Callum, and Bradley swimming. We've got Bradley here in lane six. No cap again. Oh, the apologies, we still have a Branson swimmer here in lane one. Finishing strong, time of 50. <laughs> right now, we have the boys, 100 back. We have Carter or Callum in lane two, Carter in lane four, Bradley in lane six. <coughs> Bradley's trying to talk to some people <laughs> on the behind the, the desk. <laughs> looks like the uh, Bradley be oh the touch pad has come unhooked. Oh the, the, no! The, 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 the touch pads are secured to the wall with with Velcro straps, and it looks like that touch pad has come off of the Velcro. And I the think, other one I think Ken's the, uh, fishing out of the water. The, the strap, oh, it looks like a chain <laughs> reaction here. We've got multiple touch pads going under. Wow. It looks like we had a couple faulty um, plastic strips with Velcro that hold up the, the touch pads. As you can see the one that the coach Ken is holding. There's a, a sort of plastic strip sticking out, sticking out from that touch pad. So we're going to be taking a break here for a second as we as we fix those touch pads, fishing out some more of those plastic strips. Getting the, the touch pads back together still. We've got <coughs> Coach Ken the, from the guys team and some of the volunteer timers working together to get this back together. Swimmers are trying to stay warm with the, the cold weather so they can still perform well. With this time that we have for a break, I'd like to give a shout out to one of the Branson swimmers who is unfortunately sick. 
but <laughs> wishes he could be here currently. Cam, Cameron Ariampour, he's watching the stream from back home right now to stay up to date on how his team is doing. So that's a sign of a great teammate. So shout out to Cam. Cam's also a great name. It great is. name, Cam. Uh, uh, yeah, Cam, Cam is a great teammate. I swam with him, or still swim with him at North Bay Aquatics, like many of the people on Tam and Branson do. He's a very hard worker in and out of the pool. <laughs> Recently committed to swim at Amherst. Clazing. <laughs> Looks like we're finally going to be underway on our 100 back. All right, Bradley popping up first from those underwaters. Then we've got Bradley. Carter. <coughs> Carter cutting a bit of a lead off those underwaters here. <coughs> Carter's, Carter's looking strong. Bradley's trying to catch up to Callum here. Bradley, a sophomore, correct? Yes. Almost staying in, a, in line with Callum. Sophomore a. in an all in a otherwise all senior heat. Yep. So so great performance here from Bradley, keeping up with these other guys. <laughs> Carter finishing this race strong with a good with a good lead. Callum's just managing to stay ahead of Bradley here. Wow, it looks like Bradley's kind of oh, making yeah. a comeback. Bradley's Hello. making a comeback. He's 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 coming. It looks like Callum's gonna still hold on to it though. Close into the wall. Strong finish Strong from Bradley. Strong finish. Disciplined, disciplined guy right there. Yeah. Everything Coach Ken says, that guy absorbs. Right, Cole? Yeah. He's he's one of the few guys who's always there at morning practice, soaking in information like a sponge, doing great, great technique work. Interesting thing about the backstroke start. Um, the fastest way to finish it is with a dolphin kick, but you need to keep at least one part of your body above water on the finish. So people will often flick one of their feet up as they as they dolphin kick the finish and stick their toe out of the water so they aren't disqualified. Next up, we got girls 100 breast. Uh, lane two, we got Nadine Ruse. Lane four, Chloe Firmage. Lane six, Laney Octavio. And lane eight, Nola Palstrant. <coughs> Wow, pretty even start here. Yeah. Breast stroke is another one, another one of those strokes where your underwa underwater matters so much, huh, Cole? Yeah, the, the, bre the sure breaststroke pull down, very important. You're allowed one uh, dolphin kick, yes. followed by a, 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 a stroke in the arms. Uh, a breaststroke pull down, breast actually. Pull so, down. so starting from streamline, you bring your, wa your hands all the way down trying to catch as much water and get as much speed from that as possible. <laughs> then you're allowed one breast stroke underwater. Close race here, need folks. To be up on the water. Lane four, Chloe Firmage battling with the Branson swimmer mm -hmm. in lane three for first place. Looks like Chloe Firmage is pulling it out though. Yep. Another club swimmer, Chloe, putting in a lot of work outside with North Bay Aquatics. Wow. Oh, that Branson swimmer is holding on, she though. She got a great underwater, but I still think Chloe will pull it out. Looks like in third place, there's a battle between Nadine Ruse and Lane 5. Lane 5 for Branson is just managing to, to hold on to third place there. Looks like Lane 5 narrowly beat out Nadine Ruse. <laughs> With Branson, I think taking places two and three, huh? Yeah, that that's that's, that's been by far the best race so far. And in heat two of 100 breasts, we have lane three, Brianna McGewen. Lane four, Harper Buck. Lane five, Aeneas B W. And lane six, Sabine Barringer. <coughs> And they're off. It's an all tam heat. No Branson swimmers. It's pretty close right here. It's 
see if someone can get an advantage on those underwaters, those pull downs that we were talking about. Cam, did you swim breaststroke that time? I did not. I swam freestyle. <laughs> Looks like it's a pretty fairly close race here, folks. One of the many swim traditions is to line up on the other side of the blocks when people are swimming breaststroke and shout go every time their head goes abo above the water line. Yeah. Does a good job of helping them stay motivated and helping them stay fast. Yeah, Looks like lane six will take it home with lane four in second place, lane five in third place, and lane three in fourth place. Swimming breaststroke, it's always great hearing someone shout go as your head pops above the water listening. Breaststroke is one of those, is a, one of the only strokes, I believe, where you can actually listen to people cheering on you. Other strokes, your head that spends maybe, most of the time underwater. Maybe so. butterfly, too. And here we go, we've got we have Declan Murphy in lane two, Nate Johnson in lane three with Branson, lane four, Paul Falzone, and lane six, Gino McDonald. Nate came by um, earlier and talked to us to sit today, telling us he was going to try to beat Paul uh, in this race, but it looks like Paul's taking the lead here. Let's see if he can hold on to it. Nate, John Nate Johnson, the Branson swimmer, was confident. He told us that he was going to be able to beat Paul in this race, but it's looking very close here. It's a great race. This last underwater always hurts a lot on the 100 breaststroke. Let's see who can pull out ahead of it. Nate Johnson coming ahead with that, that underwater there. Paul's trying to catch up though. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a close race into the wall here. Nate Johnson finishing just ahead of Paul. The margin of wow, half a second. What a celebration from lane three. Mm -hmm. Gino coming I in, seen that one. taking <laughs> third, and Declan in the fourth. That one, the heel clicker. What's that one called? And the last event of the swim meet, the 400 free relay. This is normally the most electric relay in my opinion. This yep. is where a lot comes down. This and the 200 relay are by far my favorite because you can put, you can stack relays with crazy fast swimmers and uh, break records. <laughs> you can do that with all relays. 400 relay is a particularly electric race because it is the last, the last relay, the last race of the meet. So in, in tight, tight meets, this is where it comes down to. We've got two heats or two teams for Tam, one heat for Branson. What are those teams, Cam? On team one in lane four, we got Ellie Philp, Julia Ulfstad. Amanda Mousy and Addy Everidge. In lane two, team B, we got Samantha Octavio, Ella McLean, Audrey Lowell, and Sabine Berenger.
Tam is getting a, a lead. Everyone's about a body length within each other. Tam, Branson, Tam. <coughs> Relays are always a great thing to be part of, especially the uh, the relay start is always is always super fun. You're able to step into it and get a lot more momentum than a normal start, so you enter the water at a much faster pace than normal. There's several techniques to do the the relay start, but looks like well, in Tam in lane four. Tam Swimmer is going to be stepping into this to gain a lot of momentum. Swing their arms around. relay it is important to, to keep track of the number of laps the person ahead of you is doing <laughs> yeah. um, one time I believe it was our sophomore year cam we had a, a swimmer who wasn't paying attention during the 400 relay and actually dove on top of the person oh my god uh, ahead of them that was not do good. you remember that no I don't who was it Zach oh Luckily, no one was hurt. Just narrowly avoided impacts, but it's uh, scary. Now we've got Addy Average coming into anchor her uh, her leg of the relay in lane form. Tam got Branson Swimmer up next in lane three, diving in. We've got Addy coming in here with a strong finish for the girls in lane four. The time the uh, collective relay time was a 3.56.5. Solid time. Branson coming in second with a time of 4.18.92 and Tam B relay in lane two coming in third with a time of 4.22.15. Next up we have the boys 400 free relay. Who do we have? It's, a, it's an all Tam race again. Branson does not have enough swimmers to field the whole relay team. In uh, the A relay we have Marcus, Brian, Calm, and Wyatt. And in B, we have Declan, Finn, Bradley, and Paul. It's going to be a very close race again. Ken has stacked these relays to be as close as possible, so it'll be a, it'll be a good race <coughs> to watch. This oh. is the very last heat of the day, too. Looks like we're actually going to be only watching one relay race. Ooh. Um, Someone missed their cue over there? Or what? <laughs> looks like, uh, I think... Just have some people who don't want to, don't want to swim in their, in their relay. It is a cold and windy day, so not not great swimming conditions. Nice so Crowley. these guys out here swimming are our troopers right now, making it through to the last event of the day. Finn Crowley's in the water right now. How would you rate that stroke, Cole? It's difficult to tell from this angle, but 
It is looking good. You can tell. Better than his brothers? <laughs> Much better. I'd say so. <laughs> you can tell Coach Ken's been putting the work into perfecting that stroke. We've got Brian Prosh entering the water now. Finn with a pretty slow time. 56. Expected more out of my little brother, but hey. Maybe it's an off day. <laughs> As the, the cold weather can <laughs> even can he looks really a little shocked about the time. <laughs> <laughs> cold weather can really negatively impact times. Just even having cold feet can be completely game changing in a race. Uh, we, looks like we've we've actually we've got an all sophomore team for Tam Bradley Stanford up next on the blocks. That's good. That's some good team bonding, huh? Yeah. They're the future of the team, anyways. So they are about much of a freshman <coughs> class. This. This right here is the, the future of Tam. All right, we've got Bradley now diving in. We've got Coach Ken getting the splits. We've got a little brother race over here, me and Cole's little brothers. Yeah. <coughs> Bradley's looking strong here through this, this first 50. Once again, shout out Mr. Harris for the awesome camera work today. He's been making sure you guys get the uh, perfect shot of all the action. Bradley's now coming on to his last lap here. Trying to finish this off strong. Paul on the blocks. Paul falls down, a club swimmer. <coughs> I'm gonna try to finish this off strong. Let's see how fast they can go. Great underwaters there. Uh, looks like he's he's taking a bit more of a lax daisical approach to this hundred. What's up? Try to bump in with another alumni Tam swimmer that also goes to Cal Poly. But here, last we got Paul little Bishop inches. strong into the wall. Time of 3:49 at 6:3. So thank you for joining me and Cole yep, on that, this wonderful day. That's the uh, that's the end of the meet. Thank you thank everybody you. for tuning in. Mm. Uh, shout out to the, to the great coaching staff. Uh, we've got Grace sitting next to us here. Um, Ken over behind the blocks. Uh, and Candace. What a great, what a great treat from the moms. Mm -hmm. 